Welcome to the Renaissance and welcome to Applied History for Negroes Part 1. Important notice, it is never our intention to offend anyone with this video. It is not also our intention to suggest, insinuate or preach hate towards any group, race, tribe or person. The goal of this video is for you to look for the books, journals, magazines or other publications referenced and study them yourself. Remember, a lie told often enough appears to be true. And from George Orwell, the most effective way to destroy people is to deny and obliterate their own understanding of their history. So, have you ever wondered why a Chinese sees himself or herself as Chinese? A Japanese sees himself or herself as Japanese? An English sees himself or herself as English? But the Negroes are the only people on earth with unknown identity or known origin. Remember, whatever thing an average Negro thinks he is, is totally different from what his brother thinks he is as well. Just as you can see, predominantly those of them in the what is called United States of America today, some think they are African, some think they are not, others think they are from Israel, some think they are from somewhere, whatever, but the important thing is they are not sure where they are from. Have you ever wondered why? As a Negro, have you ever examined your faith and belief? Have you ever reviewed the stories you were told as a child? Have you ever sought to verify whatever you were told, like the slave trade, colonization, history, etc? Have you examined how your forefathers were taught whatever you were told or whatever you know today that you learned from them? Have you ever examined how they came about them? If Arabs own and practice the Islamic religion, and Europeans own the Christian and Jewish religions, the Chinese practice Buddhism when they are not atheists. The Japanese practice Shintoism and Buddhism. And we ask you today, what did the Negroes practice before the slave trade? That's our little question to you. What was their religion? Even if they had no religion, what were they doing? We need to know what they did and how they were doing it. This is very important. Let us again look at the narratives of the Indian wannabes. Remember, they have stories that try to claim that the Negroes are indigenous to the United States. And remember, they are trying to create a different identity for the Negroes sold to the United States, different from those sold to North America as a whole and those sold to the Middle East and places like Europe and Asia. This is very important because we know that the slave master is behind that narrative and the reason being that he is looking for a way to now say the slave trade never happened or some other way to run away from his sins in the past. Remember we have consistently told you that it was impossible for the Negroes to have been able to sell themselves. This we shall ultimately show you when we look at the God factor. The God factor we mean is how the slave master usurped the place of the creator of heaven and earth, masquerade himself as something totally unknown to anyone else why he continues to lash out and unleash his terror on the Negroes. So let us look at the Dane Calloway narrative and some of the things he says that gives away the game. Remember when he said something like Indian slaves were traded for African slaves. You should know effectively that that is totally BS. It doesn't make sense. There is no way somebody can take slaves from the US or wherever he thinks it is, go to Africa and start exchanging them with other people there. It doesn't make sense because the question is, the slave master has always been a capitalist and we know that he does everything for his own interests. So we need to find out where they are getting these narratives from and debunk them from source. So in one of those videos from then, he says, in the latter part of August, a slave ship arrived and brought not anything but 20 and odd Negroes which the governor and Cape Merchant bought for victual, at the best and easiest rate they could. And here he claims that Negro just means dark skinned. Now remember the reason they are emphasizing on the Negro being dark skinned is the fact that they need to run away from the woolly hair and at the same time change the identity Negro 
from being an identity to being just a description that's the reason behind this and we shall show you why they did it shortly on that video you can go watch it is on his channel we couldn't put it up here and debunk it bit by bit because of copyright issues anyways he goes on to claim that according to john's journal that's the man in question who according to him documented these things whenever in 1619 or whenever that those slaves that's the 20 plus odd slaves came directly from villages ndongo congo and kabaza whatever he calls it in africa this is what he says and goes on to make a very bogus claim so he makes a very bogus claim that whatever he saw in a journal that he didn't show anybody no one else saw it he didn't show an image of it he didn't tell anyone how he got it debunks the idea that the slaves in america came from west africa this is very important because their interest is how to make sure that you don't know the truth and you don't see what they are doing remember this is why we have always challenged you to investigate biafra investigate ambazonia research the armies in west east and central africa because they were the slave hunting terror groups while you might be thinking that the u.s army is something similar to nigerian army or cameroonian army or those armies this is not true the armies in west africa were the slave hunting terror groups this is why if you notice they are just interested in debunking where the slaves came from without even applying the most basic of common sense to what they are saying which we shall show you how that argument collapses shortly so our challenge to you is reinvestigate those places and ask yourself why the un the au things like amnesty never condemns the killing and massacre of civilians as it continues to go on daily in hundreds ask yourself why things like the bbc al jazeera cnn do not report things like the killings in biafra and ambazonia and the middle belt of nigeria those are basic questions you have to ask ask yourself if someone that claims they are all africans is defending the killings what is his interest those are basic questions you have to ask and we challenge you to ask those questions come to this place and post it in the comment section that you have investigated and this is where you think we have lied so let us now go forward to show you why this guy is lying and why we strongly believe that the slave master is hiding behind him so let us reference a description of the coasts of north and south guinea and of Ethiopia inferior, vulgarly Angola. Note that very well. Ethiopia inferior, vulgarly Angola, being a new and accurate account of the Western maritime countries of Africa in six books containing whatever, and it was written by John Barbot, and it was published in 1732. Note that very well. 1732. Please remember that 1732 will just be about 113 years after those first slaves were supposedly landed in Virginia and our interest is to show you that that narrative is a lie of knowing how the slaves came or where they came from which we shall show you shortly. So here we see at Old Calabar in 1698. Now Calabar is in the Bight of Biafra and it's in a part of Nigeria today which is why we asked you to investigate Biafra and Ambazonia deeply. Don't just investigate, research it very deeply. So it tells us that the ship Dragon traded there in April. For 212 slaves, men, women, boys and girls, the ship being but 100 tons burden, 102 men from 40 to 48 copper bars. This is, that's the cost of the slaves. Our interest here is to show you that they were buying slaves from that place, which is the Bight of Biafra, as at 1698, which is just a few years after the 1619. Now remember, if the cost at that time were just 48 copper bars, that's what they said. Remember, they were slave Arabs and European merchants positioned at the coast at that time, which if you investigate, you will see what we mean. The villagers were thinking that these people were just there, but they were just the people behind the slave hunts and slave raids. So now, if at that time they have already started capturing slaves from there, why are they now interested in saying the slaves were not from West Africa? Just don't hold on, we are going to show you why we say he is lying. From this book, here is a map of the area as they represented it at that time. Note this very well. It is where you, Nigeria exports its oil and liquefied natural gas today. 
and it was what replaced the slave forts in that area you can investigate this this is why when you talk about biafra they they incite the army because the armies are made, made up of fools there that's all they do they incite them give them weapons and say go kill them for us that's the same thing happening in Bazonia, which we challenge you to investigate. So you notice that here it tells us about a new correct map of Calabar River. It shows us is in Cape Formosa and Donny River. Donny is supposedly Bonny today, which you can investigate. So you see that the name is different. Our interest is to give you a background before we show you that Dane is lying and he knows it. So the slave master is suddenly hiding behind him because there is no interest in debunking any of such things. If you looked at it very well, there is no interest. But the slave master knows where he is going. So it's always easy for him to get a Negro and use the Negro. You saw him do it when he wanted to sell Christianity to the Negroes. He used a Negro called Samuel Crowder. You saw him do it even with Barack Obama when he used him as a black man to sell his um, gay propaganda that's how they do so if you study the slave master very well you will see that everything including the likes of professor gates you see that while he claims that only 389,000 slaves were exported he goes to west africa to interview people born yesterday to confirm how the slave trade was done even when he has these books so that's how the slave master works this other guy now must have been contracted to say sell the idea of aborigin to them because the issue is they want to make sure that the identity of the Negro is always in question, is always in doubt. You can't place it anywhere. So that way you can never come together to say, we need reparation, we need change, we need this, we need that. You will be arguing back and forth. The truth is absolute. It's irreducible. And that's where we stand on. Truth does not fear investigation, which we challenge you to investigate anything we show you from those books, because those books we are published during the period these things were happening. So here is a map from the same book. It shows us the Angola area. Now remember, the Negroes are just the same group everywhere. It doesn't matter where they captured them from. They were just the same group. Just that wherever they came from, which we don't know, we have not researched, they were scattered all over and found themselves in those places. And they were capturing them wherever they found them. That's just what was happening. So you see the Angola he claims the slaves came from mentioned the village according to him. He said it was a Congo village and of course another village he called Kab Kabaza or whatever he calls it. We challenge him to show us an image of this journal that could have captured the names of these villages at the time that the map of the area hadn't even been drawn. This is as at 1732. You see what the map looks like. Now just google things like map of africa in 1700 maps of 15 something and 16 something and see if you will find such a village there then the big question becomes how could a man in the united states at that time know a village in africa or wherever where the slaves came from the best he could know would have been the bite because that's what bite means that's how they exported the slaves they will mark the shipping as this is shipped from so and so place they don't put the village because if the slaves came from the port where they were supposedly shipped from there is no need to put the village because they don't even know the village they would have traveled months they would have taken them from one place to another so many things would have come into play so how could he have known the village of these slaves now remember we have always told you that their plan is to ultimately use professor gates to now say that there was some form of manifest of a slave ship which they will now use to deceive everybody now remember they didn't know the language of the people they claimed at that time remember that the negroes did not have languages they were beasts akin to cattle they were bringing them up and teaching them to behave like humans they were barbaric the only thing that gives them away right there is there is no way an animal could sell another animal it's impossible that's one thing you have to bear in mind so the debate at that time was that the woolly hair of the negro means he's an animal he was naked and lived on trees which we shall show you if you haven't seen it already you haven't researched it yourself so now they are coming to tell us an animal could have sold another animal but that's by the way if he is claiming that these people came from a particular village 
how could somebody in the United States at that time look at 20 people and tell which villages they were from in Africa? That's our question to him and you if you believe him because we know he's lying anyways. But let us just move forward and look at some other things about that narrative. So obviously he got whatever he's writing from the Encyclopedia Virginia or wherever but he didn't show any image. So it's incumbent on him to show where which journal he saw that no one else can see and he couldn't even take a picture of it or show anybody how they can access that journal and read that thing he read for themselves so you see where he obviously got that from he says is john ralph died 1622 and he says john ralph served as secretary and recorder general of virginia 1614 to 1619 note this very well and as a member of the governor's council 1614 to 1622 he is best known for having married pocahontas which he mentioned in his video as well in 1614 and for being the first to cultivate marketable tobacco in virginia joined by his first wife whose name is unknown ralph sailed on a sea venture a virginia bound ship direct off the island of bermuda in 1609 there his wife gave birth to a daughter but mother and child soon died. In Virginia, Ralph turned to experimenting with tobacco, a plant first brought to England from Florida. The Virginia Indians planted a variety that was harsh to English smokers, so Ralph developed a Spanish West Indies seed, Nicotiana tobacco, that became profitable and indeed transformed the colony's economy. That's not our interest. Our interest is to show you where then got what he's saying and claims that it's from a journal that is hidden from everyone else but himself. Let's show you wh where it goes further to mention this same incident on this page. So it goes further to say Ruff is also responsible for the first mention of Africans in Virginia. In a letter to Sandys in January 1620, Ruff noted that late in August 1619, the Dutch ship White Lion arrived at Point Comfort at what is now Fort Monroe with 20 and odd Negroes. If you watch Dane's video, you will see that he used the same words, 20 and odd Negroes on board. But he will not mention that four days later, the English ship Treasurer arrived with additional Africans, the lot having been captured from a Portuguese ship carrying slaves en route from Luanda, Angola. To the west indies so you see where he got it from now ask yourself a slave ship that was going to west indies is it that they robbed it or they diverted it or they captured it what did they do with it remember the slave trade was still going on that time so it's not like the british military captured them and decided to divert the ship that should be the question here the treasurer was partly owned by samuel agol and was the same ship on which agol had transported rough and Pocahontas to England. Ruff's letter is the first extant mention of Africans in Virginia, although there may have been others in the colony before then. So this is where they are getting that there were some Africans there before the 1619. But this is not in doubt. Remember, the Europeans came with some freed Negroes to help them fight the Indians in America. And that is exactly where the ones that were there before came from which we shall ultimately show you because these are well documented but our interest is where the slave master is going with this negro and indian being the same narrative let us reference congressional record containing the proceedings and debates of the 51st congress first session also special session of the senate volume 21 washington government printing office 1889 and there we see the following the negro race in every negro in the united states whose blood has not been affected by the illicit intercourse of the white man there is a perfect identity of all the physical and mental traits and form features and color with the tribe in africa from which he is descended the Negroes found here are as varied in their characteristics as the many tribes are to which their ancestors belonged, but there is a uniformity in their threats of character, no less striking than in their general physical traits, that shows distinctly the race to which they belong. 
a race that is so isolated from all others and so distinctive and so peculiar that it is never mistaken for any other race of men. Note this very well. Whatever of civilization, cultivation, improvement and Christianity the Negro in the United States has acquired has not been bred into him by an admixture of races but has been copied or absorbed by him as the people of the white race. To ascertain the degree of progress he has made during his residence in the United States, it's only necessary to list the cotton that sheds the Negro country in Africa and observe his kinsmen in their native hunts. Now this is part of the reason why you see the so-called African Americans deny their African origin. The reason is they are now behaving like house Negroes. They now think that we are more developed and more advanced than these ones. We can't even associate with them. But unfortunately, they don't know that the Africans are not all the same. This is where the slave master is super advanced. He now uses the non-Negroes, the Hamitic groups, the Negroid groups that are dark but not Negroes because they are obviously not very intelligent against the Negroes and then these ones cannot sit back and ask themselves what is going on. For example, ask yourself how the BBC, Al Jazeera, CNN, Radio France International, VOA and all the Western media gang up together, come up together to provide false narratives about anything in Sub-Saharan Africa and they agree not to report things like the killings in Biafra or Ambazonia. Those are basic questions you have to ask. And then ask yourself, are the ones doing the killing the same as those they are killing? Because what they are doing is they are making everyone look as foolish as themselves. The slave master knows who the fools are. He also knows who his targets are. And therein lies all the problems. But let us move forward. Let us then reference a school history fourth reader grade of the Negro race in the United States with a short introduction as to the origin of the race. Also a short sketch of Liberia by Edward A. Johnson and it was published in 1894 and there we see the following. Remember where in the video he said Negro equal to dark skinned. That was a subtle way of trying to change the identity from an identity actually from a race to something like a description. That's their interest there. Remember we started this by asking you if you know any other race whose identity is in doubt. Always questioned, always in doubt as well. So here in the introduction it says the origin of the Negro is definitely known. Some very wise men have endeavored to assign the race to a separate creation and deny its kindred with Adam and Eve. And to the beginning of slavery in the colonies, Virginia, Slavery existed in the colonies by custom and not by law. It did, however, exist in the colonies. Slavery was a custom of the world and whoever desired to do so brought Negroes to the colonies and sold them to any person who would buy, there being no law to forbid it. After they were introduced, it became necessary to pass laws to regulate and control them. So in the statutes of all the colonies except Vermont, there will be found laws which recognize slavery as a fact existing at the time of their enactment. And now here is our point of interest. He says the first Negroes landed at Jamestown, Virginia. In the year 1619, a Dutch trading vessel being in need of supplies weighed anchor at Jamestown and exchanged 14 Negroes for food and supplies. The Jamestown people made slaves of these 14 Negroes but did not pass any law to that effect until the year 1662 when the number of slaves in the colony was then nearly 2000, most of whom had been imported from Africa. Please take note of the fact that he says the Dutch trading vessel being in need of supplies weighed anchor at Jamestown and exchanged 14 Negroes for food and supplies. Whereas the Dinkaloe narrative claimed that it was 20 and some odd Negroes which we had shown you where he got it from which is from the slave master's own website which we show you right again here. So we see that he got it from Encyclopedia Virginia and he says the same thing that Ruff is also responsible for the first mention of Africans in Virginia. 
So we don't know where this encyclopedia got theirs from. Remember, the slave master is very subtle. So he probably just concocted this. This dude working for them went to lift it from there and tell us he got it from Ralph's journal. You can see what it's all about here. So he goes further. You see that 20 and odd Negroes. Whereas this 1894 book, it's saying 14. We are exchanged for food. Now, if you looked at what he's saying, you would think that the whole slave ship sailed all the way from Africa to just come and land only 20 slaves. But this one, knowing that that would be an issue, went further to say that a day or four days after, another ship came with more Africans. You notice that it goes further to say that four days later, the English ship Treasurer arrived with additional Africans. The lot having been captured from a Portuguese ship carrying slaves en route from Luanda, Angola to the West Indies. So you see where he got his Angola everything from. So you see how he mixed them up and tried to present them as if he got it from a journal. He didn't show the picture. He didn't show anybody the image. Only him saw it. Only him read it. Even this source did not have it. Which we challenge you if you are one of his followers to ask him to show you at least so you can read it yourself. That way you will begin to understand what we're talking about. This is how easy it is to see when they are working for the slave master. You see that the other book of 1894 is telling us that the slave ship anchored there because it had run out of supplies. He needed more supplies and exchanged 14 Negroes for the supplies. But this one is telling us that it's 20 and odd Negroes on board. How can they go all the way down to Africa? just to capture only 20, 20 Negroes and bring them to America. So you see that it's very easy to see where their lives are when you look deeper. And here this account also has how they were employed. The Jamestown colony early discovered the profits of the tobacco crop and the Negro slaves were largely employed in this industry where they proved very profitable. They were also enlisted in the militia but could not bear arms except in defense of the colonies against the Indians. Remember, it made sense that the Indians would fight those that were coming into their territory. And remember that they came with some freed Negroes from Europe who they were using to fight the Indians. So now somebody is trying to tell you that the Negroes are now the same with the Indians, which you can see doesn't make sense. So it goes further to say, that the slaves imported came chiefly from the west coast of Africa. They were crowded in the holds of ships in droves and often suffered for food and drink. Many, when opportunity permitted, would jump overboard rather than be taken from their homes. Various schemes were resorted to by the slave traders to get possession of the Africans. They brought many who had been taken prisoners by stronger tribes than their own. They stole others and some they took at the gun and pistol's mouth. Now we ask you, those armies you see in sub-Saharan Africa, have you investigated their history as we told you? Those armies were the slave raiding terror groups. The slave trade didn't just stop. Because the Hamitic groups had been incited to believe that the Negroes were just beasts akin to cattle and all they deserved was slavery. They had the armies with which they were doing them. And as at the time they decided to stop or end the slave trade, there was nothing else for them to do because these are people they had no other jobs. If you investigate, you will see that the Nigerian army, the Cameroonian army, the Ghanaian army, the Togolese army, all those armies were from the slave hunting terror group. That's where they were created from. So because they had no other thing to do, they were not manufacturers, they were not doing anything other than slave hunting. They had to find something for them. That's how they created the armies. So when you look, you will think the armies are like the US or European armies. No, they are there to protect the interests of the slave master. They are still slave hunting terror groups, just that they have been rebranded and glorified at a different level, but they are still what they were at that time. So we go further, we see where it tells us about the slaves as well. And this is very important. It says many of the captives of the slave traders sold in this country were from tribes possessing more or less knowledge of the use of tools. Some came from tribes skilled in making gold and ivory ornaments, cloth and magnificent steel weapons of war. The men had been trained to truthfulness, honesty and valor, while the women were virtuous even unto death. 
their system of marrying off the young girls at an early age and thus putting them under the guardianship of their husbands is a protection to them and the result is plainly seen by travelers who testify positively to the uprightness of the women. Now you see the same Negroes that they told you that were barbaric. You see how this report provides you with a better information of who they were. They were skilled in many things. Do you think the slave master can just go and capture somebody who doesn't have wisdom, who doesn't have something he wants to steal? We don't think so. The slave master is a heartless and wicked capitalist. Unfortunately, those Negroid and Hamitic groups lack humanity, they lack common sense. You can even see it today. In a mighty Britain, people can demonstrate because they want independence of Wales. They want independence of Scotland. But go and mention Biafra that they destroyed with slave raids in places like Nigeria. Go and mention Ambazonia in Cameroon. They will give the fools there the weapons with which to murder others. And that should tell you that they lack the most basic of common sense. They won't even allow you to talk because they have been incited to that level. If you doubt what we are saying, look for anyone in the Nigerian army and engage him and ask him, why do you kill your siblings over nothing? You will see what they say. All you will be hearing is rubbish. Security, 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 security. Because that's what they have been brainwashed with. They no longer have the brains of humans. They lack common sense. If you doubt what we are saying, investigate. Do what we have asked you. Get a Cameroonian army. Ask the same question about Ambazonia. You see what they will tell you. But the slave master's interest is so that they can use his weapons and his bullets and keep killing people for him. The question becomes, who is the fool here? And your guess is as good as ours. Also, we see that on the New York colony, the enslavement of the Negro seems to have commenced in the New York colony about the same time as at Jamestown, 1619 in bracket. The slaves were used on the farms and became so profitable that about the time the English took the colony from the Dutch, 1664, there was a great demand for slaves and the trade grew accordingly. The privileges of the slaves in New York were for a while a little better than in Virginia. They were taken into the church and baptized and no law was passed to prevent their getting an education. But the famous Wall Street, now the financial center of the new world, was once the scene of an auction block where Indians and persons of Negro descent were bought and sold. So you see the thing. Remember, they had also mentioned that the Negroes were stronger than the Indians, which is somewhere in this book as well, if you were to read the material yourself, so that we don't make the mistake of thinking that they are the same. They are not the same. That's why it's even telling you that the auction block where Indians and persons of Negro descent, that includes both the Negroes and the mulattoes. That's just ideally what they have said there. At that time, we are bought and sold. So you understand why places like Ambazonia and Biafra do not get any UN response. No matter how many people, the fools they have there, like the armies you have, which were the slave hunting terror groups, mother, they don't say anything about it because they are all enjoying the slavery of today. Remember, the Negroes are still slaves till tomorrow morning, which we shall ultimately show you. So let's just move forward. So here again, we see that the ancestors of the American Negroes, though savage in some respects, were not so bad as many people think. The native African had then, and he has now, much respect for what we call law and justice. This fact is substantiated by the numerous large tribes existing, individuals of which grow to be very old, a thing that could not happen where there the wholesale brutalism which we are sometimes told exists, all native Africans universally despise slavery and even in Liberia have a contempt for the colored people there who were once slaves in America. So our interest is for you to see what they are trying to hide with their Indian wannabe narrative. You see that their ancestors were said to be from Western Africa but they have been trying to cover up that and that's why you see them looking for a way to now say oh the Indians and Negroes are the same or something like that or look for a way to wash away, wish away the woolly hair of the Negro and make it look like it's not even an identity. So our interest is for you to look for these materials and study them yourself. That's the, the, the path you need to play your role in. It doesn't matter what anyone says. 
look for the materials referenced and study them yourself. That's all you need to do. Here is a story from this same book that we would like you to pause this video and read the entire thing yourself and get the full context. But before we do, let us reference The Negro 2 in American History by Mel R. Elpsy and it was published in 1939 and there we see a different iteration of the same story. You can see and read this slavery insurrection and how a Negro betrayed other Negroes. But our interest here is the Amistad captives of 1839. Once while 54 Negro slaves aboard the Spanish slave schooner Amistad were headed towards Puerto Principe, Cuba. One of the number organized a revolt and took possession of the vessel carrying it to Nassau, an English port, where the authorities refused to surrender the Negroes. These 54 Negroes were from Lemboko, their native land in Africa. Joseph Sinkes, an African prince who had become enraged at the cruel treatment given him and his fellow slaves incited the revolt and took possession of the vessel. They saved the lives of two Spanish men whom they compelled to steer the ship, presumably to Africa. Finally, they landed at New London, Connecticut, where they were tried in the federal courts and finally freed because they resisted the attempt to enslave them. The abolitionists educated them and taught them the art of gardening. They were finally sent back to Sierra Leone, West Africa in company with five scented missionaries. Great Britain sent them to the Lemboko, Africa and they were never heard of again. Now you notice that this book is saying they were finally sent back to Sierra Leone, West Africa in company with five scented missionaries. Then Great Britain sent them to Lemboko, Africa and they were never heard of again. So which one is correct? So our interest here is for you to see what we mean by reading between the lines. It gave us two things here. We are not sure which one is correct. But let's look at that story from the other book. We are not sure whether it's the original, which you can also research yourself, or whether it, it was also lifted from somewhere. Now, if you notice, in Dane's own narrative or claim that the people were from a village in Africa or in Angola, he never provided the the book or wherever he saw it from he claimed he saw it from john's journal which he didn't show any image of he didn't show how he wrote it he didn't show what was written there and remember some of these people were at that time spaniards some were not english so they may be writing in spanish as well so we need him to show us that thing that document we had shown you where he got the narrative from he only added his own part of the lie or the slave master gave him that lie to add to it. We are not sure but our interest is to show you where they get these things from which you can do yourself. But the challenge is what they want as against the truth. Remember the Negro is the only one with a dynamic identity. Wherever you see the Chinese today whether in Africa where they are, they are the new slave lords or in Asia they are Chinese. But it's only the Negro that wherever he goes he makes that place home and starts denying his original home, which is most unfortunate. But on the left, you probably saw the case of the Creole case in 1841, the meeting of the Negro slaves numbering 135 on board the ship Creole en route from Richmond, Virginia to New Orleans, gave rise to another congressional inquiry. So this was when they had started stopping the slave trade. Our interest is for you to look for these materials and study them yourself. That's all you need to do. So I'm from the 1894 book. We see where it tells us that the 54 Africans on board the Spanish slave schooner Amistad under Captain Ramon Ferrar on June 28, 1839 sailed from Havana, Cuba for Puerto Principe, another place on the island of Cuba, about 300 miles distance from Havana. The 54 slaves were just from Lemboko, their native country in Africa. Joseph Sinkes, son of an African prince, was among them. He was shrewd, brave and intelligent. He looked on with disgust at the cruel treatment given him and his fellow slaves, some being chained down between the decks, spaced not more than four feet by their wrists and ankles, forced to eat rice, sick or well 
and whipped upon the slightest provocation, Sinkers witnessed the brutality as long as his noble nature would allow, and when they were about five nights out from Havana, he chose a company of confederates from among his brethren and made an assault on the captain of the boat and took him and his crew prisoners. Two sailors struck out for land when they found their captain and cook in chains and left the boat in full possession of the Negroes. The man at the helm, Montez, was ordered to steer direct for Africa under pain of death. This he did by day but at night would make towards the coast of America. Finally, after continual wandering, the vessel was sighted off the coast of the United States in August. All the ports were notified and a number of revenue cutters were dispatched after her. She was finally captured on the 26th of August 1839 by Lieutenant Gidney of the United States Navy and the Amistad and her 54 Africans were landed in New London, Connecticut. The two Spaniards found on board the vessel were examined by United States officials and the whole number of Africans were bound over to await trial as pirates. So you see that the people that were captured to be sold as slaves were bound over to be tried as pirates. So you see that's how the law still works till today. So when you see those that shot and killed unarmed black people and they do nothing to them, it, it has an origin which will challenge you to go and research. You will find out what we're telling you. That's the same thing they are doing. The law court is not supposed to provide justice. It's only supposed to interpret the law to suit whatever the law was made for. The law is not for everybody. The same way the Negroes uh, testimonies were not admissible in court. That's how it's still till today. But you may not understand unless you dig deeper into what is going on. But our interest is for you to see what these Africans read, did. Read the entire page yourself, but on the opposite page is where we are interested in. So we see where one of them said, If America men offered me as much gold as fill their scalp, said one, and give me houses, land, and everything, so that I stay in this country, I say no, no, I want to see my father, my mother, my brother, my sister. One said, We owe everything to God. He keeps us alive and makes us free. When we go home to Mendy, we tell our brethren about God, Jesus Christ and heaven. One was asked if he was again captured and about to be sold into slavery, would he murder the captain and cook of another vessel, and if he wouldn't pray for rather than kill them. Sinkers heard it and replied, shaking his head, Yes, I would pray for them and kill them too. These people were sent to Sierra Leone in Africa in company with five scented missionaries. Great Britain sent them from Sierra Leone to their homes and thus their efforts for freedom were successful. So now we are not sure whether this is the original or it was also lifted from somewhere. You notice that this one said they sent them to Sierra Leone and then Great Britain sent them from Sierra Leone to wherever. But the other one said they were sent to their village or their community or wherever he mentioned which we doubt but the important thing is for you to see how those Africans were at that time but the so-called African Americans today do not realize that America was built it wasn't like that from the beginning any other place could have been built the same way but because they think America has been built they are now happy to be there that's why you see them denying being African they don't even know that it is the same people that are preventing Africa from being built. Because the same way they built America is the same way they could have built wherever they came from if they were allowed to do so. So this is why if you looked at places like Ambazonia and Biafra, the moment they talk about freedom, the slave master will top out on their foot soldiers to go and kill them. And the United Nations, your AU, your Amnesty International and all those garbage will turn the other way. Their news media will not even report it. And that's the unfortunate part of the Negro. Whereas the other people, when their siblings, wherever they are, are murdered, they have something to say. These ones will take sides with the slave master and say, oh no, this is not true. You see some of them, even in the United States, preaching for something like One Nigeria. A system that is based on slavery and slave trade, which we shall ultimately show you. But someone is defending it there claiming to be a victim of it as well, which is most unfortunate. 
So let us just move forward and round up. Let us also reference thoughts and sentiments on the evil and wicked traffic of the slavery and commerce of the human species, humbly submitted to the inhabitants of Great Britain by Otto Bakugano, a native of Africa, and it was published in 1787. And there we see the following. First, from the contents, we see that observations on the cruel invaders and desolators of the Americans and the unchristian barbarities of the Europeans against the heathen nations. False religion, a general cause of it, the symbolical image of evil and wickedness described. Now, remember, when some people watch our videos, they tend to say, oh, these books were written by the slave masters, they can't be correct. Meanwhile, they forget that even the den that is telling them that they are aboriginals is referencing materials supposedly written by the same slave masters. Now, they forget that the Negroes also wrote books that they could reference, they could read themselves and see what those people were saying before they believe anyone, whether he is a Negro, a mulatto or even a black person. That's very important. So this is Kuguan Otoba. And a Negro slave, one of the first that wrote books in 17 somethings after the Phillies with the in 1750s. This was another Negro that wrote in 1787, just like Equian Olo, the August of Osvasa. You will discover that most of the so called African Americans have not read any of these books, but they want people to believe every lie they concoct from wherever. So here he tells us how he was um, kidnapped by some of such complexion as whether black or white it matters not i was early snatched away from my native country with about 18 or 20 more boys and girls as we were playing in a field we lived but a few days journey from the coast where we were kidnapped and as we were decoyed and drove along we were soon conducted to a factory and from thence whatever but our interest is for you to see how they got him and how he became a slave. Notice where he mentioned factory. Factories were not where they produced food or produced something. It was where they conditioned the slaves. It was something very close to the barracoon. So they had then, which they had to destroy when they were willing to stop the slave trade. Now, we challenge you to investigate all this. There was nothing like cell or trade cell in Sub-Saharan Africa. Even if there was a cell, it was the Arabs, the Babas, the Tuaregs, the Fulanis, the Ashantis, the Yorubas that captured the slaves, selling them to those that were buying them. Not for any Negro king that had no powers, no army, to have been able to sell another. Remember, it's impossible for an animal to sell another animal. At that time, the Negroes were classified as beasts, lower than cattle. You have to bear this very important point in mind. And here we come to the end of this edition of Applied History for Negroes Part 1. We thank you very much for listening and we do hope you will find time to conduct your own research or at least look for the materials referenced and study them yourself. We thank you very much once again for listening. Peace.